We have a trade to announce and it makes no sense, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Hey everyone, just got home from uh, being uh, the role of friends on Tim and Friends. I was on for a couple segments with Tim McAuliffe and for the second time, there was a trade while I was in that studio. I was on that show once with Sid and there was a trade between the Sens and the Oilers and then I was on once with Tim today and the Leafs made a trade with the Blue Jackets. And between hat picks in that show and this, I'm losing my voice. But here's the trade that we're gonna do a little video on. The Toronto Maple Leafs acquire Riley Nash from the Columbus Blue Jackets in exchange for a seventh round pick, a conditional seventh round pick. Well, my goodness, what are the conditions? I got you. Thanks to Luke Fox for this. The seventh round pick Toronto sends to Columbus will become a sixth round pick if Riley Nash appears in 25% of the Maple Leafs playoff games in 2021. Now, as a player, here's why that makes sense. He's listed as a center slash wing, mostly center. He's tall, he's six foot two, defensively minded, and if you can't beat him, join him. The Leafs have lost to Riley Nash in the playoffs twice. In his career high year where he had 41 points with the Boston Bruins, they beat the Leafs in 2018. That was the second out of the three. I know you were wondering. And most recently, he beat the Leafs in the qualifying round. I almost said first round, but it was technically before the playoffs because he was on the Columbus Blue Jackets last year when they beat the Leafs. So wait a minute. He's an NHL vet. He's played hundreds and hundreds of games, about 600 games. You said he's tall. He's a center. He is defensively minded. He's kind of gritty. He's got playoff experience. He's basically prototypical for what the Leafs need. What, what is that condition about with 25% of his playoff games? Surely he's going to play well as a player. Yeah, I think Riley Nash makes some sense for the Leafs. And I do think they like this player. And I think if the Leafs are going to make a run of it, they're going to use Riley Nash. But the condition is because Riley Nash was actually just put on LTIR. That's right. He very recently suffered a knee sprain and he's going to be out of the lineup expected for four to six weeks. Now... At very least, I guess he doesn't have to worry about quarantine as much. Well, then again, he wouldn't have to worry about quarantine as much for the days, but also, what's he doing to rehab his spring knee? Wait a sec, why would the Leafs make this trade? And why did the Leafs put Frederick Anderson on LTIR as well? The answer, folks, as it always seems to be with the Toronto Maple Leafs, is a little bit of shenaniganery. But if they're the team you cheer for, it's funny. Basically, and I think we talked about this on the last Steve Dangle podcast, I think they were talking about it on 31 Thoughts, it's basically the Patrick Patrick Kane loophole. Remember when the Blackhawks put Patrick Kane on LTIR, they saved a bunch of space, and then, oh, would you look at that, when the playoffs rolled around, he was perfectly fine and they put him in the lineup. Actually, basically the same thing is going to happen with Nikita Kucherov and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, is there shenaniganery there? Well, I'm sure the Blackhawks would have rather have Patrick Kane, and I'm sure the Lightning would rather have Nikita Kucherov, but the timing is convenient. But those guys make like nine and ten million dollars with Riley Nash, it's just a smaller version of it. He has a $2.75 million cap hit. This is actually going to provide the Leafs with a little bit of cap space and more flexibility heading into the deadline, which is only in like three days. And this was immediately pointed out by Elliot Freeman. In addition to getting a useful player, Toronto extends its LTIR space for regular season. So your too long did not read of this trade is Riley Nash is useful, but also the Leafs get some space. So even if Riley Nash never plays a game for the Leafs, he will serve his purpose in this way. He's going to save them space during the regular season. Now, if he plays games for them in the playoffs, that's the cherry on top. Puckpedia, another great account to follow for this sort of thing. Go to the second paragraph there. Leafs place Nash and Anderson on LTIR, allowing them to exceed the cap by $7.5 million, leaving them $5.8 million more annual cap hit that can be added. This reduces by $5 million when Anderson is back. And right now you're probably thinking, Taylor Hall! They're going to get Taylor Hall and they're going to put him on the fourth line. That's not quite how this is going to work. And a few people poured water on this. James Myrtle, Jonas Siegel, they wrote an article for The Athletic. Basically, the Leafs aren't going to go out and get a really expensive guy. They're going to need your team to uh, retain. They might even have to get a third team in there. Uh, sort of like the role that they played with Robin Leonard going to Vegas in that three-way deal with Chicago. And I think a big part of that issue is Frederick Anderson is coming back this season. Like, this regular season. He's going to come back before the playoffs, I think actually relatively soon. So, they're not going to get all that benefit there. Actually, even at the time that I'm writing this, like, even the best accounts that I follow for the cap management of all this still don't seem to quite have it nailed down exactly how far above the cap the Leafs are allowed to spend. But, just because we don't have an exact number yet, we might, by the time this video is 
up. But just because we don't have an exact number yet does not mean it's not a good thing or that the Leafs didn't get more space today. They did. And it pretty clearly shows that they're going to make at least one more move in the next few days, which is exciting. So the answers then become, does this make it more or less likely that the Leafs are in on a guy like Nick Foligno or David Savard with the Columbus Blue Jackets? I mean, they made a deal with Columbus. Why wouldn't they then go out and get those guys? Well, don't forget a few years ago, they traded Roman Polak to the San Jose Sharks only to trade James Reimer there shortly after, and I am sad. Pretty much any and every guy on the Columbus Blue Jackets is available. And don't forget, the Leafs could have spoken to the Blue Jackets, potentially. I'm just, this is a theory that I'm throwing out there. They could have spoken to them about a deal that didn't quite work mathematically, but it will in a few days. Think about that. And if you think that's far-fetched, I mean, think about the trade that we're dealing with here. The Leafs are beefing up for the playoffs by getting a guy who's hurt. Now, where does Riley Nash fit into the lineup? I think you can do that on account of we're all bored right now, but it is a bit of a waste of time on account of he's not going to be a Leaf for like a month. He's not going to get into a game until the playoffs begin. Sandine could be in the lineup by then. Robertson could be in the lineup by then. Guys could get hurt. Guys could get healthy. There's all sorts of possibilities, but fine. For the sake of argument, let's pretend Riley Nash is in the lineup and everyone's healthy. Alex Galchenyuk was probably like 13th uh, in the Leafs depth chart not too long ago. There's no way they consider him that way now. He seems like a mainstay in the top six. He was with Tavares and Nylander. It looks like he's getting bumped up to Matthews and Marner for Saturday. Pierre Engvall seems like the logical choice, especially the fact that they're getting Riley Nash seemingly because they're not totally satisfied with Engvall at center. What about Engvall on the wing? Myrtle and Siegel had a very interesting lineup because their fourth line was sort of what I imagined it to be. Engvall on left wing, Nash at center, and on the right you have Ilya Mikheyev. I actually really like that line. The third line though, on the left wing they had Joe Thornton slash Wayne Simmons, which is not a person, it's two. Guys, I think it's entirely possible that one of those two is a healthy scratch. Seriously. Based on his stats lately, I'd think Joe Thornton, but like... <laughs> How are you going to take Joe Thornton or Wayne Simmons out of your playoff lineup? But I think what we're coming up with here is this is great depth. More is better. This is a great problem to have. Figuring out, oh no, which good player is going to be a healthy scratch. That is the sort of difficult conversation you got to have on a daily basis with a great team. The Leafs are great. Look at them. They're in first. They've been in first. So what do the Leafs do with this lineup? What do the Leafs do with this newfound cap space? And what do the Leafs do in the few days leading up to the 2021 NHL trade deadline. What do you think? Leave a comment in the comment box down below. But for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Mo Wine. Oh, and you can go to Sportsnet's YouTube channel and check out my full interview along with Tim McAuliffe. We got to speak to Jack Campbell. Have you heard of him? It's quite good.